Before I start, if you're watching this as it comes out, there's just one week left of my Kickstarter for my Japan travel guide. So if you've been meaning to pledge, you've got until Thursday the 2nd of April to get your copy. The link's in the description. Hi there, I'm Amy from Cakes With Faces and welcome back to my planning series of tips and advice to help you plan your trip to Japan. And today is all about other types of train passes that aren't the Japan Rail Pass. Now the Japan Rail Pass, the JR Pass, is excellent if you're traveling around Japan. I've used it, not all in the same trip, but I have used it to go all the way from Kagoshima in the south all the way up to snowy Hokkaido. It can save you a lot of money compared to individual tickets, but it does also add quite a lot to your budget. At the moment, a seven day pass is £230. Now the price does vary with the exchange rate and at the moment the exchange rates are pretty bad. So today I'm going to show you some alternatives that are a bit less well known. Some of them are for if you're staying in other areas of Japan and some of them are for if you're staying in Tokyo so you don't need a Japan Rail Pass but you want to go on a few day trips. Now the standard JR Pass covers the whole of Japan. You can go on all the bullet trains, all the Shinkansen and all the train lines run by Japan Railways. That's where the JR comes from and you can go on all of them as much as you want. Now what you might not have realised is there's also regional versions of the JR Pass which are exactly the same thing but just for a smaller area. You can get them for areas like Hokkaido, Kyushu, Shikoku, Kansai, that's the area around Osaka and lots more. There's quite a lot of options. So if you're just going to one of those areas, like if you're staying in the Kansai area around Osaka and Kyoto, or if you're just going to Hokkaido, you can get a regional pass and save money. They might not be for everyone because most of them don't include Tokyo. And of course, if you're doing the most popular route, the golden route between Tokyo and Osaka or Kyoto, they've made it so you have to get the full pass for the whole of Japan. The exception to that is the Tokyo Osaka Arch Pass, which does the golden route, but a slightly different version. You travel in the shape of an arch, going via Kanazawa and the Japanese Alps, so you can see Nagano and places around there, which is really good because you get to see some more interesting places that are a bit less visited by most tourists. However, there is a slight drawback to that one as well. It's only really good for a one-way trip because it doesn't cover the most direct, quickest route between Tokyo and Osaka on the bullet train. So you'd either need a lot of time to go back via the arch or you'd want an open jaw flight where you fly into Tokyo and then out of Osaka or the other way around. As I mentioned, a couple of the other regional passes also include Tokyo. There's the Tohoku Pass, which is the area north or east of Tokyo. There's one that includes all of that and South Hokkaido as well. And there's also the Nagano Niigata Pass, which is a really mountainous region, the Japanese Alps. Most of the JR passes are for consecutive days, but some of them are flexible, so you can use them for a specified number of days within a certain period. And that includes the three I just mentioned that include Tokyo. So for example, for the Tohoku pass, you can use it for any five days within a two week period. So what that means is you could go somewhere, stay there for a few days, move on to somewhere else, move on to somewhere else and then go back to Tokyo for the rest of your trip. So it's really good for exploring the area and seeing a lot of different places. So if you don't need the whole of Japan, you might be able to save a bit of money. For example, at the moment, the Tohoku Pass is £150 per person compared to £230 for the full JR Pass. So for two people, you can save £160 altogether. And I think being a bit more focused with a regional pass encourages you to explore the area a bit more and see all the places you could go to. And you might end up going to some places you might not have found otherwise. Most of the JR passes are only for foreigners, so you need to buy them online before you go. There are some changes coming up to the process quite soon, but I'll tell you about them when they happen. Next, the Tokyo Wide Pass is good for day trips and overnight trips from Tokyo. It costs 10,000 yen and it's valid for three consecutive days in the Tokyo area. That's broadly speaking, the prefectures around Tokyo. 
There's a list on the JR East website of all the lines it's valid for, which includes some bullet train lines. There's quite a lot of places you can go to, including Mount Fuji, Nikko, where you can see some really elaborate shrines and a national park, the Izu Peninsula and the Bozo Peninsula to see places on the coast, Kusatsu, which is a really unusual onsen town where they cool the water in the centre of town, and ski resorts in Niigata. Now this one might not always save you money, really it depends where you go. Sometimes the trains for day trips from Tokyo are surprisingly cheap. When I went to Mount Takao, which is an hour outside Tokyo on the train, it was only a couple of hundred yen each way. And if you're going somewhere like Yokohama, you can get there for less than 500 yen. So for this one, it's best to have a think about the places you might go to and compare the prices for individual tickets to see if it's going to be worth it. You can look up the prices for train tickets on Hyperdia. You can search on there and it's all in English. If you do decide to go for it, you can buy it online before you go or you can buy it at major JR train stations in Japan. All the details are on the JR East website. You'll find it if you search for Tokyo Wide Pass. Next is the Flex Ticket. Now, I don't think this one's quite so well known. It's from a company called JR Tokai Tours and it's a discount ticket for the bullet train that's only for foreigners. What you get is a round trip on the bullet train and a ticket for an attraction or an experience. It's called the flex ticket because it's flexible. You can go on any bullet train you want at any time of day and you can stay at your destination for up to seven days before coming back. There's packages for Kyoto, Osaka, Hakone, Hakone for Mount Fuji, Mishima, where there's a tall suspension bridge with views of Mount Fuji, Nagoya, and Koyasan, which is a mountain not too far from Osaka. And it doesn't have to be from Tokyo. You can get it from Osaka, Nagoya, or a few other places too. As well as the return trip on the Shinkansen, the flex ticket package also includes an experience coupon, which includes things like a tourist attraction or a meal. In Osaka, you can get the Osaka Amazing Pass for one day, which is a really good option because it covers all your sightseeing for the day and your local trains. A good thing about the flex ticket is you can go on any bullet train you want, and that includes the Nozomi, which is the fastest one, which isn't covered by the Japan Rail Pass. The catch is you can't reserve a seat, so you need to make sure you get to the station early so you can get a seat in the unreserved carriage. The flex ticket costs less than the train ticket would if you bought it separately and it includes the experience coupon as well. It also costs less than a JR pass, but of course it doesn't cover any other trains which the JR pass would. So whether it's worth it really depends on your plans. So if you want to take a look at the figures, if you bought a regular ticket for the Nozomi, that's the fastest bullet train between Tokyo and Osaka, it'd cost you 27,740 yen for the round trip. The flex ticket would be 22,500 yen, and you could also get the Osaka Amazing Pass included, which would normally be 2,700 yen. Compared to this, a seven day JR pass is 29,650 yen, but that would cover a lot of other train trips as well, which the flex ticket doesn't. If you want to go for the flex ticket, you can get it from the JR Tokai Tours desk at major stations in Japan. It tells you which ones on their website, jrtours.co.jp slash en. Next is the Platte Kodama, which is also from JR Tokai Tours. It's a discount ticket for a one-way trip on the bullet train between Tokyo and Osaka or Kyoto, or one of the other stations on that line in between, like Nagoya, Hamamatsu or Shizuoka. The catch for this one is you have to go on the Kodama, which is the slowest bullet train service. It stops at every single station along the way, so it's going to take you a bit longer but you do get a free drink along the way. You can have a soft drink or a beer. I don't know if you know, but all these names for the different types of Shinkansen have meanings and Kodama means tree spirit. So with the Platte Kodama, you can get from Tokyo to Kyoto for 11,900 yen for the one way trip. But as it's the slowest service, it'll take about four hours instead of about two and a half hours on the faster trains. The flex ticket that I was talking about just now would actually be cheaper if you're doing a return trip 
and you get to go on a faster train. So really the Plakadama is only worth it as a budget option if you're doing a one-way trip and you've got a lot of time. You have to buy the Plakadama at least one day in advance from the JR Tokai Tours desk at major stations. The directions are on jrtours.co.jp slash en. Finally, discount ticket packages for tourists. There's lots of these discount packages from the different train companies in Japan, which are really good for day trips or overnight trips. Now, often for day trips, you can just use your Suiko or Pasmo card, just like you would for all the other trains in Tokyo. But if you get these discount packages, they can save you a bit of money on the train. And sometimes they also have discounts on something when you get there, like for a boat trip or a meal or a cable car. The best place to find out about them is on japanguide.com. Look up the place you wanna go and go right to the bottom of the page where it tells you how to get there. And that's where it'll tell you if there are any discount packages available. You can also browse the packages on the train company's websites, which can be a way of getting ideas for places to go that you might not have thought about otherwise. So for example, on Tobu, Tobu Railway's website, you can see their packages for Nikko and Koagoe. And on Adaki Railways, there's Hakone, Enoshima and Kamakura, which is one of the places that's known as Little Kyoto, like I was talking about last week. And they're not just for Tokyo, you can get them for other areas of Japan as well. So for example, when I was staying in Fukuoka, I got a discount package for the train to Jizaifu and Yanagawa, which also included the boat trip I went on. You can usually get passes for the main popular day trips in the area. You usually buy them when you're there from the train company's desk at the station. If you follow signs towards the line with the same name, you can usually find the customer service desk somewhere near the ticket gates. They often have an English speaker because they have lots of tourists coming through and they'll have leaflets on display. So if you get stuck, you can just point at the ticket you want. So I hope you found that useful. A few alternatives to the Japan Rail Pass, some ideas to help you explore outside the city and maybe save you a bit of money. If you're watching this as it comes out, take a look at my Kickstarter. It's finishing on the 2nd of April and all my other planning videos are all together in a playlist on my channel. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.